1,000. Sorry, I didn't mean to flex on you. I'm just here to tell you about S400 and S500 turbos. <laughs> All right, guys, so what we have here is a rotating assembly from an S400, an S410SX to be specific, and an S500, S500SX. I wanted to compare the differences between the two. A lot of guys think the only difference between a 400 and 500 is the sizes available, but there's actually quite a bit of difference. Uh, 400 versus 500, compressor wheels are different, um, and the inducer and the overall size, along with the turbine wheel, uh, inducer and exducer are the difference as well. Um, and just the overall size of the components, guys. I have the thrust bearings out here and the journal bearings so we can take a deeper look on, you know, how much bigger the S500 stuff is, what dimensions are bigger and which dimensions aren't. Let's take a deeper look. Right off the bat here, uh, we have the S500 on the right and we have the S400 or S410SX on the left here. Uh, you can see that this S500 has gone through some abuse. You can see the compressor wheel and the turbine wheel both have foreign impact damage on them. But guys, right off the bat, you can really notice that the S500 has a whole lot more going on to it. When we look at the journal bearings and thrust bearings, we can also see quite a difference. The S500 does look like it's smaller, but if we take the S500 and we put it on the S400, we can see that it's actually the same size. It's just the difference in the bore hole, which makes it look smaller when you set it aside. But what you really want to look at is the thickness. Look at the S500 versus the S400. There's a lot more material here, guys. And the same is going to go for the journal bearings. Here we have an S400 journal bearing versus the S500 journal bearings. And there, there's really a noticeable difference there in the size of the bearings. I'd like to take a moment here to talk about bearings. I mean, this is a journal bearing. It's not like a ball bearing. It's very different. You can see that there's these small holes in the journal bearing. And this is where the oil gets through to lubricate the journal bearing as it's riding on the shaft. Because, guys, other than the oil being in here, I mean, you would have metal-to-metal -metal contact. That's why lubricating the turbo and having oil, you know, oil pressure on the initial startup is so important. The S500 journal bearings are the same. You can see this one scored up pretty good. This turbo had a pretty catastrophic failure as indicated by the damaged compressor wheel and the damaged turbine wheel. As far as thrust bearings go, this is a 360 degree thrust bearing, same as the S500. And what that means is the material goes around the shaft 360 degrees. The other option for a thrust bearing is a 270 degree thrust bearing, which basically would not have this material here. It would be open so that the bearing could be, you know, picture it like a C. That's what a 270 degree thrust bearing is. It only goes around 270 degrees. Other than the bearings, the overall consensus of the S500, it's just massive. And it's hard to pick it up on camera, especially because majority of the fins are missing from this turbine wheel compared to this one because of the damage. But even just look at the girth of the shaft here. And I've got some calipers, and they're just some cheapy guys from Harbor Freight. Don't, don't bug me too much. But you can see here, 66 and a half millimeters versus... 48 and a half millimeters. I mean, there is a good size difference in the shafts, which is going to help, you know, prevent the shaft from snapping. But the S500 is made for a greater horsepower application. So naturally, there's some more material there. And same thing goes for the compressor wheels. Even though it's missing some fins, uh, this is an 88 millimeter inducer uh, with 120 millimeter overall diameter versus a 78 millimeter inducer with 105 millimeter overall diameter. And we got one other thing we can take a peek at. Last metric we're going to look at, take a look at the difference between the S400 and S500 covers. Um, this is both V-band style, and you can see that they both have the same V-band outlet. It's a 4.2-inch V-band. But look at the girth here versus here. You can see how much it really gets necked down from the S500 to the S400. Even if you stack these things, you'll see that there is quite a difference between the S4 and the S500 compressor covers which will really kind of help you grasp the size difference between the S4s and the S5s. All right, guys, so we touched on the physical differences between the S400 and the S500. Uh, let's talk about sizes. So the S400 and the S410SX, um, the 400 and the 410 have a different bearing housing. The 410s are more designated for heavy-duty usage. And, you know, a Caterpillar, Cummins, Detroit, majority of what we do here around here on this channel uh, the only difference there is the bearing spacing, from what I understand, um, and it has a lower lower bearing housing so that the drain tube's attached. But anyway, um, you can get an S400 in as small as a 63 millimeter, I believe, 60 S4, 
S463, um, and then everything up to an 82 in the S400 and the S410 SXs. So you got 73s millimeters, 75 millimeters, 76, 78, 80, 82, uh, and then like I said, you have those smaller sizes as well. For the S500, um, the smallest you're going to get is an 88 millimeter, and it goes up to a 91 in the SX series, and it goes up to a 94 in the SXE series. So let's touch on SXE. For this is a 500 SX, this is a 400 SX or 410 SX. Um, the SXE series is their multi blade wheel. It'll be a 10 blade wheel versus the 7x7 or the 8x8 that's in the S500. Um, the SXE is virtually identical to the SX in the series that we're talking about here, other than the 10 blade wheel. Um, so, like I said, you can get an S500 SXE or an S400 SXE. In the S400 series, the SX will be a 7 plus 7, which is 7 full blades and 7 half blades, uh, versus a 10 blade for the SXE. And for the S500, it's going to be an 8 by 8, 8 half blades versus half full blades on the SX. And then the SXE will be a 10 blade wheel uh, billet for the SX series S410 SXs. But guys, the S400 SXs can have a cast wheel, so make sure you know exactly what you're getting. Whereas on the S500, it's going to be a cast wheel unless you go with an SXE, then you get a billet. But anything in the S410 SX will be a billet wheel, uh, along with the 360 degree thrust bearing for the SF, S410 S. Woo! S410 SX will have a 360 degree thrust bearing, but a lot of the other S400 SX series turbos will not have a 360 degree thrust bearing. They'll have a 270 degree thrust bearing. Wow, that was a lot to say. Anyway, if you have any questions on S400s, S410s, S500s, uh, about how journal bearings or thrust bearing works, guys, leave them in the comments below. Uh, let me know if we're doing a good job with these videos. I just kind of want to educate customers on turbos in general, whether you buy them from us or not, because there's a lot of pitfalls that can be avoided if you know a little bit about the turbos. Sometimes it's a, you know, a little bit can make you dangerous, but I always think learning and education in this is, you know, a great idea. Um, I have a bachelor's and a master's degree that basically don't mean anything because I decided to pursue turbos and I love it. Um, but I think that there's a lot to be learned on the internet. So, uh, if you guys are enjoying this, please like, subscribe, comment, and let us know what other kind of content you'd like us to put out. Thanks so much. Take care. Dan and we're here to talk about wheels. What's up turbos and turbos? As you can see here by these plates, when you hold them up and put them like this, one's bigger than the other. But as my wife says, size doesn't matter. I thought you were gay. <laughs>